Thank you, Jesus. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can nobody tell me that there's not a God? Can nobody tell me what God can't do? Can't no man may say no, but God says yes. Thank you, Jesus. I don't Thank mean you, to. Jesus. I don't mean to interrupt. I think Men his Henderson has to say something for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to come up with words, take time. Thank you, Jesus. In a song that fits that key. Thank you, Jesus. God is Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. praise is in this house this morning. God is a miracle working God. God is able to do that exceedingly and abundantly above what we can ask or think. The Bible said everything that has breath, let him praise the Lord. So saints, just for a few minutes, a few seconds, 
Let us just give God some praise and glory for what he's done through our youth. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of all praises. Thank you, Jesus. He woke us up this morning. Thank you, Jesus. He gave us a mind to come and go. Thank you, Jesus. They talk about in our Sunday school lesson not to take anything for granted. God is worthy. God is worthy. He's worthy of all praises. Thank you, Jesus. Is there a thank you, Jesus, in your heart this morning? Is there a thank you, Jesus, in your soul this morning? Thank you, Lord. He's worthy of all praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give reverence to God this morning and to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we all know that he's worthy of all praises. Yes, he is. If we don't praise him, the rocks require out. Right. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give honor to my pastor for allowing us to have the opportunity uh, honor to all the men and brethren, the saints, the ministers, the women in ministry, and all of you, my father's children, in your respective places. I'm going to say, giving honor to you. And most of all, I'm going to give honor to my sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> my wife, Josephine. Johnson, thank you. Have my back. They all know you, sister. Why don't you just stand up anyway? Thank God for my wife. My wife said he found a wife, found it a good thing, and obtained favor of the Lord. God's word is good. Is there always smooth sailing? No, but God is God is. God is God is. If you all would now pray with me, we're going to get into the word. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for what you already done in the service this morning. We thank you for the praise and the worship, oh God. We thank you for who you are, Lord. Speak to the hearts of your people this morning, Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, I ask that I decrease and you increase, Lord, that someone may come to you and say, what must I do say? What must I do to be saved? And others may be encouraged like they already are in your word. And we thank you and we're praising you right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, if you will go with us to the book of Genesis, which is the book of the beginnings. The book of Genesis, the uh, 12th chapter. And, um, a lot of us are familiar with these verses, Genesis 12, 1 through 5. And that's uh, Genesis, the first book in the Bible. The origin, as the, uh, the Greek may say, and the Hebrews may say, the book of the beginnings. But that's uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter. Verses 1 through 5. And if you have it, say amen. amen. And if you need a little time, just say, wait a minute. Because it is the first book in the Bible. So that's, <laughs> it's an easy one. It's real easy. Easy to find. Let's go to number 12, chapter 12. Verses 1 through 5. And it reads as such. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, 
and I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old. And when he departed out of Haran, Abram took his, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had, that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth, they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his holy word. And the uh, subject of this lesson is answer the call. Amen. Just answer the call. Amen. Have you ever had a, your phone to ring and by your call ID you decided, you, you saw who it was and decided not to answer. <laughs> Said, oh, he don't want nothing. She don't want nothing. They can call back. Then they ask you, I called you, what happened? I ain't hear my phone ring, my dog had it. My baby was playing with it. But all they had to do was answer the call. It could have been important. Somebody could have needed a prayer. Somebody could have needed some support. Could have had a flat tire, but sometimes we decide we don't want to answer the phone. Answer the call. Or are we thy brother's keeper? Did God tell us, give us instructions on how we should love one another? That's the commandment I gave you to love one another. And as we answer the call, we begin to know our duties as Christians. Just answer the call. But I got something for you. If, if, you get the, if you have that problem or had it, you might get it. For those of us who can't get the call through, let us just call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I dare you, my brothers and sisters, to call on Jesus. He will answer your calls. Romans 10 and 13. For, who, for, who, so, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I dare you to call on Jesus. Yes, sir. Call on the name of Jesus. But what if the Lord is calling you? Will you answer the call? If the Lord was calling us, will we answer the call? Matthew 11, 28 and 30 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and he shall find rest into your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, family and friends, answer the call. He's calling us. He's calling you. I'm reminded of a, a government poster when I was little. I don't know if y'all remember that poster. Uh, well, Uncle Sam, and uh, I was a kid when I used to see this all the time, and he said, I want you. 
And the uh, poster is actually pointing to you. I want you to join the army. And while I'm thinking about it, I want to say thank you to our brothers and sisters who served our country in the army. May God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. When, when, we, uh, when you sign up in the army, you uh, kind of sign your life, life away, so to speak, because they give you a uniform that you wear. So you have to take off your, your old clothes, your street clothes, your style of dress and changes when you join the army. Because how is the army going to know you're in the army if you don't have on the uniform? They got new rules and regulations and expectations on how are you to behave in the army. You learn that it's not about you or your opinion. They become your new parents, your brothers and your sisters because you don't belong to yourself, you belong to the army. We come over here after answering the call. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. It's not about the outward appearance, about what you got on. It's about answering the call. When you answer the call, the spirit of Christ will begin to work inside of you. He begins to convict you of the things that you may have on that's not pertaining to holiness or to the instructions that the Bible gives us. The Bible gives us instructions on what we even have to put on, if you will. Also, we begin to change our talk and our walk. We begin to transform from the inside out. Because there's a sign that will show if we join God's army, if we answer the call, there's going to be a change to take place. We're going to begin to do the things that God tells us to do. Why is that? Because we answered the call. My question to you, my brothers and sisters, have you answered the call? Because when we answer the call, it comes with commitment. Yeah. It comes with denying ourselves. Right. It comes with answering the phone when we don't feel like answering the phone. Yeah. It comes with helping our brothers and sisters out when we don't want to help them out. Yeah. Because God teaches us to love one another. Have you really answered the call? Or do we look like we have answered the call? Amen. In this lesson today, in these uh, uh, sessions, sections of scripture today, would you give me a glass of water, please? Uh, verses 1 through 3 is the nature of the call when God is calling. We're going to get into that. Verses 4 through 9 is the response to the call. Right. Have you, my brothers and sisters, Answer the call. We will see that Abraham's faith. Oh, bless you, thank you. We will see that Abraham's faith. Abraham had faith in God. To answer the call is a faith call. It's an action. It's believing in God. And we act on what we believe. Amen. Faith is not based on your feelings. You can feel bad one day and good the next. 
Faith and feelings are two different things. You can have a good feeling, but where is your faith when things get going wrong? When you don't see what you need to see or think you should see, where is your faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. My brothers and sisters, whatever you're going through, it may be bad, it may be looking bad, but keep the faith. Keep God's promise. Because what you see is not always what you get. What's around you, God has the last say so. He has the last say so. The call of Abraham contained not many promises, but obligations to God. What does it mean to follow God? It means to be obligated to God. God requires both obedience. Abraham obeyed God. And a personal commitment. This becomes between us and God. It's between you and God and not nobody else. Right. Him as Lord in order to receive what he's promised. We have to do what God says in order to receive what he's promised. Right. In Genesis 12 and 1, it says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, because God has spoken to Abram, or Abraham or Abram already in the, in the city of Cher, uh, Arab Cherodim. He already has spoken to him. Now he's speaking to him again a second time in Haran. He's saying, now the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country. Leave the place that you used to be in, Abraham. Leave your surroundings, Abraham. And leave, like I said, your comfort zone, Abraham. Just paraphrasing. And get thee and from thy kindred. You got to leave your uncle, niece, nephew, whatever, the kindred. Leave all that, Abraham. If we want to follow Jesus, we have to leave things behind, especially the things that don't pertain to God. Yeah. Right. And from thy father's house, you got to leave mom and daddy's house, but she says father's house. Leave the house that you was in to follow me. When we follow Jesus, Jesus said, follow me. And that's leaving everything behind. And to a land that I will show thee. I'm going to take you to a place. But I'm asking you to leave. Will you answer the call, my brothers and sisters? Will you leave the things that God does not approve of? Will you leave the things that's hindering you from serving God. Amen. Will you put God first before your relatives? Leave. Why does God want him to leave? For one, that family served idol gods. They served moon gods. Leave that surrounded that don't praise me, that don't put me first. Leave it. So here's that command. Here's that nature of the call. I want you to leave. You want to follow Jesus? Leave everything, everybody. God's got you. He's going to take care of you. And I will make thee a great nation. This is conditional. This is one of the things that he said he's going to make him a great nation. Abraham, even after you're gone, you're going to be a great nation. You're going to be a great, you're going to have a great group of family members, relatives behind you. And I will bless thee. If we obey the Lord, he'll bless us. 
You wonder why, we may wonder why sometimes things don't go the way that we think they should go. That's because we didn't do like God tell us to do. We want our cake and eat it too. We want to be on both sides of the fence. We want to serve the devil throughout the week. Well, not all of us, but you know, some of us may. And then come to church on Sundays, God has said, make me first. Leave everything. Leave all those things and follow me. And I will make thy name great. There's going to be great history behind you, Abraham. Just leave all that. Leave it all. And you know, I think about God today, the Bible today. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. How when we leave this place, God say, I go to prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He's got many mansions for us. And there's going to be a time where we don't have to cry no more. Because we answered the call, we won't, we won't, you won't be in pain anymore. We're going to get new bodies. There's hope beyond this place that we're in right now. There's, it's conditional. But all you have to do is answer the call. And thou should be a blessing, Abraham. You're going to be a blessing. And you know, somehow God could, God blesses us who's obedient to him. And of course, the Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust. But we're talking about eternal blessings. We're talking about special blessings that only God can give. He owns everything. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. God is going to do it, y'all. He will take care of us. And you know, we're not saved by making promises to God. We're saved by believing in God's promises. Us making a promise to God don't save us. It's believing in God's promise. And it goes on to say, and in these shall all families of the earth be blessed. God promises to be blessings of Abraham extended not only to the physical descendants, that's the believers of the Jews, but also to all who are true, true in the faith. God promised to bless us as well. The true seed of Abraham, that's in Galatians 3 or 14 and 16, all who possesses faith like Abraham are children of Abraham as well, and that's Galatians 3 and 7, and are blessed along with him. They become Abraham's offsprings and heirs according to the promise in Galatians 3 and 29. In other words, we become part of Abraham's blessing if we receive God's spirit in us. Verse 4 says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And this is Abraham's response to the call. Faith is an action word. Whatever we bring with us from the old life into the new life is likely to create a problem. When God calls us, he calls us. If I bring her over here, the Lord could save her. If I bring him over here, the Lord can save her. God has called us. Well, my mom ain't saved yet. God has called us. When we bring things into this Christian life, it creates a problem, if you notice. Then we say, Lord, get me out of this. But his instruction was not to bring it with you anyway. So Abraham... So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. This goes to show the age of him. And it don't matter how old we are or how young we are, God is calling. Will you answer the call? 
It's obedience. Will we be obedient to the Lord? And the Lord took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into that land of Canaan, they came. So we see that uh, Abraham was obedient to the Lord. Faith without works is dead. When we answer a call, it's a faith call. It's an action word. Have we answered the call? I want to tell you about Jesus. He came down through many generations. Born of a virgin birth. Born to die for our sins. And he answered the call. He said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Jesus answered the call. He was crucified because Jesus answered the call. Amen. He hung on that cross because he answered the call. Yes, sir. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He answered the call. Right. He took a beating for us because he answered the call. He stayed up on that cross and he could have got down, but he answered the call. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus died and he rose again the third day because he answered the call. Right. Then he got up with all power in his hand. Yeah. Why? Because he answered the call. Yeah. Will you, my brothers and sisters, answer the call? Well, how do you answer the call? Glad you asked. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Again, it's a, it's a faith call. Will you answer the call? May the, Lord bless, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Answer the call. God bless you. All right.